Like, can you, do you have to have like a master's degree to be a college professor? Yeah. So you can't just get your undergrad and immediately become a professor? No, definitely not. Because okay. that, that's one of my professors. What he said was, I went and did all this schooling to do this job. So, of course, I'm going to take it seriously because kids would say, hey, your requirements and the syllabi and the syllabus and the itinerary and the syllabus is a little too complicated. And he said, if we're not going to do advanced learning, I studied for eight years. You guys are doing advanced learning. Then then why 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 don't we just show up and not like there needs to be advanced learning. It needs to be hard. So to be a professor, I can only imagine. I get that because my pre-cal teacher in high school, his name was Dr. Evans, which means he wanted to be a professor, correct? Like he went and got whatever it is that you become a doctor. Is that a master's or is that a PhD? I don't know. PhD is above master's. What's a, well, how do you become doctor? Same thing is up there with PhD. So it's not the same thing as PhD. Doctors, medical, PhD, I believe is literary. Because I know my, my cousin, she got her doctorate, but I don't know exactly like it went grad school and then doctor, whatever. But this dude. Went and became a doctor of math, right? He, he went and studied to the highest of high, and he was teaching high school students. My question is, what the hell was he doing? Right. You get extra money. It doesn't matter what level you're teaching at. Sure, he could have had a base pay at college Oh, better. my God. He could have been bro, bro, so much more well and, like, compensated, right? You get ten grand more if you have your master's and you teach in high school. So he was he was getting good money and not having to deal with college crap. He was at a high school. Oh, I would rather deal with col. I would rather teach college every day of the week than high school crap. Do you know the high school crap that you have to deal with? Every single one that comes in there complaining about this or that or this. Oh, my boyfriend, my dog ate my homework. Oh, can you help me? I need extra credit. I mean, it has to be drama after drama. After drama. See, that's why you needed to go to school in the north, dude. It was cold all the time. The hallways were freezing. Outside it was cold. So you just wanted to get into class. There was never just lollygagging in the hallway. You ran to class. You kind of get in warmer. Teachers teaching. You're just happy not to be outside in the cold. Dude, I, I don't know. We just weren't misbehaved because I guess in the Texas, maybe it just all of a sudden people just do haymakers. I have no idea. But in the north, you're just in class. You listen. I feel like we were well-behaved, dude. I feel like we were not well-behaved. I mean, you can text Billy. I guarantee he wasn't well-behaved. Um, and Dr. Evans, I had him, and, you know, you get the syllabus or whatever at the beginning. Of the, yeah. It's like I'm reading it, and it's like, oh, first class, we're going to learn this. Second class, we're going to learn this. Third class, we're going to learn this. Fourth class, exam. So our for- fourth class, it was going to be an exam. And I, he's going over it on the overhead projector, and I was like, ha, fourth class exam, you're funny. And he goes, that's why I'm not laughing. I was like, this is going to (laughs) suck. This is going to be the longest year of my life. Bro, geometry? Luckily, I was dating the girl in my class, and she was the hottest girl in the school. I would have never been able to survive that class. You don't understand what's happening on the TV, on the computer screen, on the wiper down projector. The overhead projector. That one. Dude. Do they still use that? Dude. I don't know. I got Boomer says it's all now with iPads. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's all digital now. But dude, there's no. I mean, those classes are 45 minutes of hell. It was miserable, <laughs> dude. I. That's why I'm saying sometimes you just got to put into perspective how great it is now to be out of that. Because if you're going through it, those are the bad times. You got to wait for these are the good times. I, I'm. Just, it's bad. Eventually, <laughs> they do become good times. Like. You can get through it. Like, I didn't mind, like, algebra. That was fine. I didn't. My algebra teacher sucked. It was so boring. I mean, she could have made it fun. I see these teachers now relating it to sports, and you're kind of doing interactive stuff. We just sat in our class, pulled out a piece of paper, and wrote down the entire class. 100%. (laughs) Worksheet after worksheet, fill out this form. Oh, my God. Dude, it was miserable. Miserable. And then you squeak by. I would always get C's or B's in those classes. You squeak by. The whole time you're just wondering, did mom see that grade? Oh, she. my mom always wanted a progress report. What'd you do first week, second week? Dude, horrible. It, it was brutal. And it was the, the point of class was, and if you had a sign seating, it sucked. If you got stuck next to no fun people 
or no hotties. You had no one to talk to, no one to flirt with. You just sat there the whole time. It was like, wow, this is a lot of fun. But geometry, I, I flirt, flirted with this girl named Julie, and she was a year younger than me, and she was in honors geometry with me. And I flirted the whole time. I passed the first semester. Second semester, I failed Miss Mulder, so I had to retake it the next year. But then I took regulars. Ha! <laughs> You want to talk about a breeze. Once I was in regulars, oh, my God, because I'd already learned it all. So simple. And pre-cal, I just gave up. Like, I quit filling out the homework. I quit. Like, I mean, I didn't do anything. Yeah, I sold on geometry. Algebra, I was fine at. Physics, I actually did well because it was probabilities, which now relates to gambling. So, I, surprisingly, I was fine with. But, dude, geometry, I still don't get obtuse stuff. You would just look in the back, get the answers for half of the – questions and you'd be able to fill those out and make up bullcrap work to show your work in the square dude it was miserable who and, uses ge- like what profession an architect i presented this to my wife the other day she said architects okay if in high school they want to say hey if any of you guys have any interest in becoming an arch- architect you take geometry everybody else you don't have to take this crap because i don't need to know um the pernagronium th- i don't even know what it's called pernagronium theorem Pythagorean. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like side, angle, side, or angle, side, outside, box, square. Like they had the proofs. That's what they're called, proofs. And you had to come up with these different ways on how you got. It made no damn sense. I don't even know what they are. Do you remember proofs? I know exactly what you're talking God. about. And hey, Like, why did we have those? Dude, don't even talk about it because it's giving people chills right now that are driving into their trucks. Or proofs in geometry. In geometry, a proof is a series of statements that use known facts such as postulates, axioms, and lemmas to verify the truth of other statements. Like, what the f- does that even mean, and why am I learning it? I'm telling you right now, to this day, I don't understand it. I got a C- minus or a C in geometry, but that doesn't mean that you learned it. Correct? They, yeah, no, right, you're right. You Which just, is sad. You you cram the night before, you walk out of that exam, and you flush it down the toilet. You flush it from your memory. Dude, and then me and my sister, we got into uh, forging teacher signatures. How'd that go? <clears throat> mom found it went well for two couple weeks, but then mom found out we were forging signatures. So then she went and found the real grade was like a letter grade worse than what we were telling her. It got real interesting at school. In school suspension. Parent approved. Uh, parent Enforced. Recommended. Enforced. I was the first kid in the school to get in school suspension by my mom. <laughs> so we had to go sit in a room and study for oh, two I was, weeks. I, I had in school suspension. Dude, this is giving me the worst. The two worst <laughs> memories of my life is school at, at times in college, some of those classes, high school, and then Bobby Bone Show when we first moved to Nashville. Those are the three worst times of my life. Oh, when we And moved you it? just brought up one of them. Here, I Googled <laughs> proofs. I'm just going to tell you. I, I, this is what I Googled. Proofs in geometry. And one of the first things that come up is proofs hard in geometry. Proof writing is often thought of as one of the most difficult aspects of math education to conquer. Yeah, we That it. tells you how stupid it is. But the teacher wanted to be greater than thou and know it, and then we don't know it. She has the answers. We don't know the answers. Yeah, you will bow down to me. That's what I felt about Dr. Evans. Why? Dude. I understand you want to run this like a college classroom because you're Dr. Evans, but guess what? We are juniors and seniors in high school. We ain't yeah. college people. Yes. I don't know why you're treating this like a college class. Relax a little bit. Props to biology because they would actually bring in animals and you could feel what you were doing. And then also physics, my teacher would drop stuff and say, hey, this is let's, let's calculate how fast it drops. That was awesome. That's badass. And you say teachers that get you hooked, right, that you see on the internet now, they're few and far between, but they do them because they highlight them like, oh, they come up with rhymes or claps or handshakes, and they make and they relate sports to it. I took physics my junior year. Mr. Harris was on my schedule. Didn't know who he was. Said, Mr. Harris, room 106. Said, all right. And I walk in there, Binnaker's in my class, off. Chest days in my class. Dude heavy? Not being sexist, or was it a half and half class? Oh, half and half. Um, a lot of dudes in mine. Really? Yeah, it was like the football guys, Jesse Wills, me, Tyler Norman. Uh, Meredith Massey was in my class. Um, oh, that's right. Uh, yep, those two girls. Sarah and Beth were in there. Laura Havern was in my class. I mean, we had a great class. And 
we're all sitting in there like the bell rings. There's no freaking teacher. No Mr. Harris. And we're all sitting there talking. We're like, well, where is this cat? You know what I mean? Like, well, this is a great class. He's not even here on the first day. Kids doing drugs? No, no one's doing drugs. And Hand me that pen. Three and a half minutes after the bell rings, all of a sudden from the doorway, a spear comes flying. Boom! That's how you start a class. And he hits the wall, and we all, what the? And he goes, hi, guys, that's physics. <laughs> and I was like, I am all in. Sign me up for physics. I want to learn. Oh, my God, this is so freaking awesome. He actually hits a kid. He hit the chalkboard. And it was great. <laughs> that wouldn't fly nowadays. Dude, it, you want to talk about the class going silent in, a, in, in an instant when that thing flew across, boom, hit the door. Ah! Patrick Carlson was in the class, and it was, it was a great class. And here's the cool thing. Then he had a quote board. He had, like, paper above the chalkboard, and if you had an awesome quote, you got up on the board, dude. Anything is possible! Like, if you had a great physics quote, if you had a theory, if you had a, you know, something about what we were working on, he's like, that needs to go up there. Bang and, this. And you'd get a chair, and you'd get to write it on a piece of paper, and you got to stay up there the whole semester. That's a little corny. People try to get perverted. What? Like, people are just all being very noble and... Well, no, it, you may not even... On accident, you just may be having a conversation about something and someone says something and the whole class laughs. He's like, that's a quote that needs to go up there. Oh, really? Okay, so that's cool. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I thought kids could just write their own. No, no, no. You had to get approval. Like, you, it's just conversation. If you said something great or, like, really dumb and everybody laughed, Why do put we, it on... The, we not do that. Well, we don't have any good quotes. Dude, Clay and Buck come in here. We have a quote board. <laughs> Speaking of Clay and Buck are taking over the studio today. Wow. Now we're we're doing this at an odd time. We're doing this at two in the morning because Clay and Buck are gonna take over the studio. Gotta get out. Hey dude, wake up. They're the boys from New York, hey, the big apple. You said it's corny, right? That the quote board's corny. I'm gonna come we're gonna come back after this and I'm gonna ask you, corny or cool? Right after this. And also that doesn't sound like a segment that was pre approved by me. Well, I was watching the Mavs Thunder game the other night. And after the game, the post game interview, the Thunder all do the post game interview on the court. They all stand around as SGA is getting interviewed. And they've done this all season. Right? Yeah. They spit water. Not them, but I've seen other players do yeah, it. Yeah. And then they bark like dogs. And they're, it's like everybody is part of the team. So everybody stays for the interview. Right. Team. Do you like that, or is that corny as crap? No, that's good. It, it's Dude, the whole setup of a lady going, I've thought, why don't we, because how stupid interviews are, why not at the end of the podcast we interview ourselves how we thought the podcast went? Making fun of reporters that interview players at the end of a game. So you've always thought that, right? I've thought it's the stupidest thing ever, so if you can bring light to it, why not? Hey, uh, Coach Saban, what do you think, man? And Dude, he, uh, team play, what? he's not going to give you his game plan. He's not going to be super vulnerable. He's trying to get to the locker room and teach his guys something before the second half. I I think we've moved. Now they just put hot chicks to interview the coach. Otherwise, nobody would give a rip. I mean, like Mel Kuyper or uh, your boy Orlovsky on the sideline interview. Nobody cares. So they used to it? have uh, that boy, uh, that dude, uh, what was his name? He had all the cool jackets on TNT. Craig Sager. Yeah, he was great. I liked him. Rest, Rest in peace, in man. Peace. But – now you see, and you'll see the new crop. Like you see, they start to age out. The older women reporters, boom, here's the new freshmen in college. Get in there and interview the coaches. You know what I'm saying? Every football season is like, who is this blondie and brunette? Oh, she just graduated from Florida State. All right, congratulations. Welcome. Already got a sideline position. She's a great reviewer, interviewer. But I watched them do that interview, and I was like, that is, they, they look like a team that likes each other. They look like they all get along and they have fun and they enjoy it. Right. And I loved and I may, maybe I'm just an old now, maybe I am stupid, maybe I like corny crap now, but I was like I love the fact that after the game they all stand around to do the interview. And uh SGA, so good. Na what's his name? Shy Gillis Ale Gil Gillis Alexander, how, how do you say it? Hold on. It took me a while to learn Shoyatani. Nephew taught me that one. But they also have commercials together. So that tells you they get along. If yeah. you and me did commercials, it would be, 
You know, who's getting the pay cuts, you know? No, I don't understand. Ray, it'd be a split. I don't understand what you're saying. But I'm saying, name two other guys that do a commercial together. Probably because there's jealousy involved. I guarantee you they do that. Have you seen their commercial? Yeah, it's uh, Chet Holmgren He's and like, Shy. I thank you for giving what a player needs. It's what a player, player wants. wants. <laughs> I guarantee you either uh, Head Bloom, what's his name? Holmgren. Holmgren or SGA got the commercial and they said, bring in my boy too. Guarantee it. No, they had to have teammates or else it wouldn't make sense. They had to have the both of them because they're both singing it and talking. I so don't the know. company that went to them said, what team actually has teammates? Thunder. You don't see Anthony Davis and LeBron James. <laughs> they ain't doing that commercial together. It's not even believable. You know, not, not even friends. believable. Like Russ and Harden. Oh, my God. <laughs> no chance. That's what I'm saying, dude. So they, they knew the people they had to go to. I mean, I think it's so fun. Like it's so it's so corny and so stupid, but it's so fun. And I like that. Now my question is because I've dumb sports questions. Oh, oh, I have got speaking of dumb sports, I gotta read you this text thread from Billy and Danny. And not right now, but in a minute. Because okay. it's dumb sports. It's gotta be read. It's gotta be read. Okay. I'm sitting there watching, I don't even know what, and we're watching basketball. Me and my- Yeah, who's were you and the- Me, my five-year-old, and, and my four-year-old. The family plant, Ray. And he's like, Dada, Dada, can, can the players see the lines on the court, or is that just for us? Good question. And I said, no, 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 those are there so they know like when they're shooting a three-pointer, when they're shooting a two-pointer, or he goes, or shooting a one-pointer when, it's, when, when they, they don't guard them. I'm like, yes, free throw. And he's like, Dada, Dada, can see, they see the clock? And I'm like, yeah, they can see the clock, but there's a clock in the arena. They can see it. And he goes, no, no, no. And this is something I have never thought of, Ray, and I don't know the answer because I haven't been to an NBA game in so long that I don't know. He said, Dada, you see where the numbers are counting down on the court? By where they shoot the one-point shot. Can they see that? No. That's all graphics we just see. So they don't have the shot clock counting down right there at the free throw line? No, they got it up at the top, though. Yeah, I know they have it above the basket, but I swear to you, when he said this to me, I was like, my five-year-old has stumped me because I have not been to an NBA arena, and I have no idea if they can see that. And the question I had, similar to that, is golfers, can they see their own shot? And it was answered for me, yes, because a camera guy got behind Rory and showed Rory looking at one of the big TVs across a pond, and Rory was able to see his shot on the TV as he's walking up to the 18th. Is it like that at every course? Probably not. But at Wells Fargo, you can watch yourself play. That is awesome. And it was showing him be pain and watch himself finish his shot. Because when they hit it, right? Because when I hit a golf ball, I'll look up and I'm like, oh, I'm not sure where it went, you know? They are able to follow it. Is it because there is a TV right there following it? Like like a hundred, like 50 yards away? Because when they hit it 300 yards... They don't know where the hell it's going. But remember, dude, they know the backs and fronts of all these courses. They know the bunkers at 310, so they had to get it all to get it to 320. Right, but sometimes I, they don't know, dude. Sometimes they get up on their ball and they're like, oh, I had no idea it was a plug. No, but what I'm saying is they hit it, and they sit there, and they, they hold it, and they watch, and they watch, and they watch. Can they really see the ball 250 yards away? I can't see it that far. So how the, can they see it? The ones that can't. VJ Singh, okay. Fred Funk. Okay, because because they're old. Yeah, they they have trouble seeing it. So you're telling me when Rory hits the ball 300 yards, he can see it all the way in the air. Yeah, especially if it goes straight. When you get the wood stuff, maybe not. Yeah, dude. Not brother. Brother Pitts loses his ball. No, every no. Time Pitts, play with him. Pitts hits it about 150 yards and 150 yards to the right, and he'll drive 300 yards up the fairway and be like, <laughs> "Man, it should be around here somewhere. I don't know, brother." I, I swear it should be around here somewhere. I got to play again with him. I haven't played with him in a while. I haven't played golf in a while. It won't stop damn raining. I it won't stop raining. All right, can I read this about Billy and Danny? You want to read it right now? Go for yeah. it. What for, is this called? What is this segment? This is not text with Justin. It's text with Billy and Danny. Go. Uh, so Billy last night says, Stars Mavs, going to do it again? And obviously, the Stars won, the Mavs lost to OKC. Yeah. So Billy was... Missed one, correct? Correct. So then this morning, Billy goes, uh, I'm going to the Dominican Republic. 
Wait, wait, wait what, what, what does that have to do with anything? No, it doesn't. Who's Bill, going to the Dominican Republic? Billy is. Billy. For what? He's just, dude, he's partying right now. It's amazing. You want to be envious of a life, be envious of that one. So Are him and, is Taryn going? I don't think so. Uh-oh. Hold on. Are you? No, no, no. He's It's business. Dude, he travels all over. He goes to okay, LA. Okay, so they're good. Yeah, they're fine. I'm just making sure. Billy goes, looks like I would have been two for two. So how are you two for two when last night you- No, no, no. He said it looks like I would have been. But he wouldn't have been because he said Mavs, Stars, again tonight? Doesn't that mean those are his picks? Yeah. And so then he tried to backtrack and say, "Then, dude, then it gets complicated. I don't want this to get too complicated to people's listening, but Danny goes, Mavs, yes, Stars, no. This is all last night. Got it. And Billy goes, why no stars? And then Danny had said, I so, but, so what did Danny say? Don't, don't skip. And so Billy goes, I'd probably go oppo of that, but who knows? So oppo of what? Is he saying oppo of Starves Mavs, his original bet? Or oppo of what Danny said, Danny saying just take uh, Colorado? So get, you get how confusing that is? Yeah. Confusing as hell, and then this morning Billy goes, "Looks like I was two for two. Yeah, in a backwards ass way. If you read through those messages, I, and then I go, "Hey guys, from now on, can people just say locks and say the exact teams that they're picking? Because that made no sense the text thread." Yeah, because he said I would go opposite. Is it opposite of the hockey thing or opposite of his original thing? Because Billy started it with Dallas and Stars again tonight, so that's his pick. And what did that guy say? He said he would go. He would go Colorado. And Billy and, but he said, would go. But he would go Dallas. He would go Dallas. No, my buddy, the Fort Lauderdale guy, said he'd go Colorado, and Billy said I'd go Oppo of that. So he's saying stars, but he never said he's going Oppo of his original. He Mavericks. never said op- Oppo of Mavericks. That's what I'm saying. So he needed Ma- he needed both. Op- but he never, dude. It was so complicated. And I said, guys, now we need to just have a lock sign by what your picks were and just let everybody know. No way to do it ba- ass backwards, guys. Come on, come on. We're better than that. Yeah, that's a little weird. That's no, like, but then Billy the next morning, and then he goes. Now he's texting. Now, Danny, if I would have put a thousand dollars on that, oh, see, how much would go. I have won, see? dude? Dude, these guys have lost their minds. And so here we go. The Danny's the <laughs> hold on. Danny's is the best. And, wait, then I got fired at him. I go, uh, Billy, two for two. Hmm. You said stars, but where's the OKC pick? And I said, all right, guys, after reading it 10 times, yes, Billy semi kind of picked it, but very odd, roundabout, backwards-ass way of baking a lock. And then Billy goes, what would 1K have paid last night on my upset picks? And Danny goes, I lost, Billy. I have no idea. I'm not your sure. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Billy, day after the fact, now says that he picked them. Now he's like, there hey, I had go. these locks. There we, but I never heard the word lock last night. That's funny. Get out of here. Hey, I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to text you the day after. Right, but you have to text it, but then you also have to say, hey, I'd go oppo those picks. And so then I'm like, well, is it oppo of both picks or just oppo of one pick? But you have to start the text with, hey, Ray, I'm going Dallas, and uh, I'm going the Stars and the Mavs. Oh, so those are your picks? I'd go oppo that. Wait, what? You started. So confusing, but hey, welcome to gambling. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, um, I'm gonna go Bruins. And I'm gonna go Rangers. I uh, go Oppo that. Okay, so you would go. Okay, you go, go Bruins, right? Oppo that, <laughs> dude, dude. But but you started the text thread. But I'm gonna tell you what. You know what did happen? The Orioles, dude. I don't know if you saw this. They didn't win a single game all season. Gunnar Henderson. No, Coach Pitch. Roger. Orioles. My brother's. Uh, my batter's box. Wow. What up, everybody? It's batter's box here. So my nephew's team, they didn't they didn't win a game all season. So they have an end of the season tournament. And they played the Blue Jays. The bubble game. And the Orioles got their first win. Wow. Got their first win of the season. Hey, just like LeBron's, though, championship with the Lakers doesn't count in the bubble. No? Oh, was it? It was tournament, though. It was tournament. No, yeah. no, no. They didn't win the tournament. They just won one game. Bubble games don't count, in my opinion. That's a good point. Hey, but I want to say congratulations to the Orioles. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back. Ray, we're cooking. No, it feels weird having cameras on us, dude. I feel weird. You have cameras every day of your life. I know, but when we do this pod, we never have cameras. 
I mean, it's definitely throwing me off, but I'm not the star you are. No, no. Dude, right. you want to hear a message that kind of hurt me last night? Please. Who's you, it from? Uh, I got to read the exact person. I want to quote him correctly. And I love how Facebook makes you go to new posts. Otherwise, it's oh, going to do I know some it. random algorithm, see? and it'll show me a post from a month ago. I don't care about a month ago. I want to see the last post that uh, somebody posted. You can. There's a way to do that. You I know. know. Most relevant or some. Most crap. recent. Recent. That's probably how you should do it. Now, this is where you. This is where you pro- people get all weird. One person on social media tells you you're not good at something, and you start getting all in your damn feelings. <laughs> like you, it's like. Morgan does the same thing. Like, Abby does the same thing. And I'm like, Arnold, can you console her, please? Like, coddle her. I mean, guys, who gives up? Come here, Abby. Who, who gives up? What, Abby, come here. Who gives up what they say? Who gives a damn if they write a little comment on Facebook? Guess what? They couldn't do what you do. The truckers? The farmers. Farmers definitely can't a lot of people think this is easy to come in here and have these thoughts and opinions and carry on a conversation because they can carry on a conversation on the farm it ain't as easy <laughs> as it looks okay no. like no. i know it seems simple like oh anybody can just do this no because every joe blow tries to start stuff and no one listens to their shit because no one cares all right this comes from here he goes edward this, 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 this is sensitive Ray, guys. You know, big, bad, macho man Ray. He's the alpha male. This is him. He, I guarantee you, he stewed on this for a couple days. He probably went to Bay. Did you go to Bay and be like, Bay, look what they wrote about me. Or did Bay show it to you? How did it work? I just saw it. Okay. After it, I was going to tell you. After, so after you saw it, yeah, but I, gonna... I don't want to read it yet. I want to know what you went through emotionally and what you did with that. Once you saw this. Well, there were two messages. One was from Kyle no, Truby. I know. And then, okay. One was from Edward Ward. Okay. Word. And after you read these, did you go show Bay? No. Did she you send her a link? No. I believe she was out in the living room. I was going to stop the podcast. I was just going to do one for the week. I don't have to give them two podcasts, three. Okay. If they think it sucks. See, this is what I'm saying. So This is what I mean. Kyle Truby <laughs> does the shit emoji <laughs> after we posted the podcast. And then you commented, couldn't agree more, just being funny. Right. That's what you do. You just laugh at it. Like, okay, cool. You don't like it? Guess what? There'll be another one in a couple days, and we'll try to do better. They all can't be home runs. You can never satisfy everyone. Even every chick I took home from 6th Street back in the day, not all of them left satisfied, I promise. (laughs) So then Kyle Truby fires back and says, wish Ray put as much effort forward as you seem to. Dude's a poser, as we used to say. Like, what? I don't put any effort into the podcast? <laughs> like, I listened to some of it. I thought we were both laughing at segments. We were both creating segments. I mean, bro, that's my energy. If that's not it, I ain't got much more left in the tank. And then he goes, he's a poser. How am I a poser? I yeah. say I live in the country. I have a wife. I say that I gamble a small amount compared to what I used to. I don't know what I'm posing about. I say I work for the big show. I do work for the big show. So that was that. Then we're going to move on to Edward Word. He then fires with the one that got me. Oh, that the poser and the one that got you? Because here's the thing. I don't know how you're a poser. And you, these what people don't understand is most podcasts don't have other jobs. So this is their one focus they have to be on for one hour or 45 minutes in their entire day. Ray and I work another job. Ray gets here way earlier than I do. He gets here at like midnight, 1 a.m. So you have to understand, he's been at work for 9, 10 hours before we do the podcast. So yes, some days energy low. But also, he's not as energetic as I am. I'm loud. I'm obnoxious. I'm very animated. Ray, when he drinks, animated, obnoxious. Normal Ray, kind of quiet, like a little turtle. So Edward Ward says... I don't know why a turtle. That doesn't make any sense. He goes, the pod is cool, but I have to admit, I can see why Raymundo doesn't get to talk much on the big show. So that's him saying that I suck on the podcast. 
No, I, is that what he said? Yeah. So I mean, my response to that was, I, we can only just do one pod a week. Why am we doing three? You're such a little baby. Right. But You're if I, if people say I suck at the podcast, why am I doing three a week? I don't care. Do you? It's not like it's really changing much of my life doing the podcast. Right. Oh my god. Oh my god. I never. I, this is what's so amazing to me. Right. But I mean, but he went one person on Facebook. But there's no comment. I. That's why I didn't even respond. Because there's nothing I could say to that guy like, hey, I think I'm good at my job. Like, I'm not going to re- respond to that. Or I'm not going to say, hey, man, meet me in the streets. Freak in the sheets. I'm not going to say it. But I'm, and I'm, I didn't want Baser to defend me. Thank God she didn't say anything. But, <sighs> dude, it's tough to get those messages on our personal Facebook of people that hate the pod. It's like, I'm sorry it's changed. But why don't you read the comments that are... Fluffing your ego, blowing wind up your skirt. Dude, it makes the most sense, and every country artist says it when they come in here. I disagree. There's a, there's a hundred of them that are good. Those are fine. It really doesn't. Because I that the people that are positive is how I actually think of myself. The people that are negative Man. is how I don't think of myself. So when somebody says something like that, I'm like, damn, do I really suck at this podcast? <laughs> Dude, I was ready to just tell you, hey, man, because we're kind of crunching this week to do some extra podcasts. I was going to tell you, just don't even worry about the rest of the week. I'm going to take off. Dude, you can't, I I mean, because I genuinely listened to Monday's podcast and I thought it was actually pretty funny. I really did. And so does one person say that I didn't put enough energy into it? And then another guy says that my personality sucks and he understands why I don't get to talk on the big show. I mean, you left out the one comment. He said, because someone said, I disagree. Ray in his out of left field comments is what keeps me coming back for more. Ray is the comedian. And your boy, Edward Word, you forgot this. You didn't read this comment. Oh, no. We can agree to disagree because he's definitely no comedian. He tries way too hard. It's borderline annoying. How does that make you feel, Ray? Dude, if I would have read that one, I'd have for sure not done the podcast. (laughs) One guy's random (laughs) comment is what shuts down the podcast. Hey, so guys, hey, they do a documentary on us in 15 years. So, man. Why'd you guys quit doing such a you know successful pod that got 162 listens a day? Oh man, this guy Edward Word, he told me I was a poser. <laughs> no, that was wood. Oh, oh uh, that was trombone or whatever. <laughs> I mean, hey, I can't believe that those are those get to you. Definitely did. Like, so No, because then you're I'm like, <laughs> maybe I'm not supposed to podcast. Maybe I'm meant to just be a producer. He's right. Because he said, I get why you don't get to talk on the big show. Well, I mean, you're right. I'm not actually a professional orator, if you will. But I, listen, a professional orator. You're you're not a professional orator. Just when you're on the radio, you're not on the radio or on T, well, maybe on TV. If you're on the news, you're probably a professional orator because you show no t- personality. You're not on the radio to be a professional orator. You know what you're on the radio for? To be entertaining, to be funny, to be random, to get people to come back and listen. Right, but then that got me to my core. Maybe we're just not entertaining. I don't know why, why you're loving me in this. <laughs> no one said anything about me. I pull you no, in. Hey, no one said, hey, lunch, you suck. Because <laughs> guess what? When they say I suck, you know what I do? <laughs> I laugh. I'm like, I don't give a damn what you think. Uh, I think I'm entertaining. I think I'm funny. I think I'm good at storytelling. And that's why I'm here. I don't give a damn. You don't want to listen? Bye. See you later. Guess what? We'll get your neighbor down the road to come listen. All right. Well, podcast is Here, Ray, hold on, Ray. Let me get you one to pump you up. We'll go to the email, okay? We ask people, why do they listen to the pod, right? Hey, lunch and sizzin. Coaches, I hope you're doing all right. I listen because the stories you both tell are very relatable and are funny. I only listen to the sore losers because I find you both relatable and your personalities are great. Keep up the great work. Julie. Thank you, Julie. That was a good one. Okay. Let me give you another one, Ray. Sick. So first of all, how come you guys, when Bobby on the big show was talking about being sick with a stomach bug, neither one of you chimed in talking about how Lunch's family was sick for the entire week? Chimer in her. Oh, maybe he would have sent you guys home. Now I see why you didn't. But I just wanted to say, 
You guys are great. I love your personal stories and sports commentary. Longtime listener from Lake City, Florida, the hell slash devil state. Hey, at least it's better than New York or, God forbid, California. Go Gators. Go KC Chiefs. Go Cowboys. Erica Glass. Random teams. Oh, Glass. That's not Buddy Glass. Maybe that's Buddy Glass's sister. I don't know. But, dude, people love you. Coach, I didn't need that, but it just took me aback. So, no, I'm brought back. I'm good. We'll take a break, and me and Ray are going to have a little counseling session. We'll be right back. Ray, don't hit those beds. No, you can hit whatever you want. No, man, over to you. I I just, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh uh, and you were you called the Justin thing. I hate to just talk about my friends. Go ahead, but man. Uh, you said me and Justin's relationship would deteriorate a little. Oh, bit. Oh, it's over, man. I mean, bro, we haven't hung out in like a month. I haven't golfed with him in probably three months. Uh, he did a text thread with me and Baser yesterday. Maybe one response from Baser. I didn't even respond. <laughs> it's not looking good. Because <laughs> like there was a car accident at a place near where we used to live. Oh no. No, nobody died. Was he okay? He wasn't him. Oh. And so then we were all making fun of the people at the apartment complex who probably got in the car accident. Like, there was some 60-year-old drunk that were like, oh, he probably drove into the wall. You know, old people we used to live with. Yeah. But I didn't find that humor that funny because we moved on past then, so I didn't even respond. So, I mean, that's where we stand right now. Well, I mean, okay. Because we always make fun of that the guy's unemployed and always trying to find work, and so we said... Oh, he was probably doing his Uber delivery, and he accidentally ran into the wall at that restaurant. But it's not him, but we always just kid about Fritz. But apparently that joke just doesn't hit anymore, so I didn't even respond to it. Um, well, if you want to make you feel better, I'm going to the Braves game tonight. Braves Padres. Dude, we need to bet it. I need inside information. Morton. I need to know about Acuna. Uh, Azuna. I need him in the home run lead, dude. Hey, you need me to tell him to hit one? Dude, I get a hundred thousand. He he hits the and ends up getting the most runs. So do you tell you're telling me when he comes at the bat, I'm gonna be like, Ray needs a homer. Ray needs a homer. Do it for Ray. Do it for Sizzin. Dude, do Az- it for Coacher. Hey, we got that puppy at three thousand odds. Like, what do you want me to tell him? We need Azuna. We need him to be the home run leader. Uh Acuna could come from behind and be the stolen base guy against Ellie Dela Cruz, but Ellie Dela Cruz is the far. He's minus five hundred right now to be the stolen base leader. So there's nothing really other than maybe the Braves win the title, but I have the Dodgers and other futures. I just don't think the Braves are like with Morton. He hasn't been great. Um, Acuna is definitely below three hundred. Yeah, they got some. Gr- they got some great bats. Duvall. I mean, when Albies gets back, I mean, and we're staying right there by the ballpark. Let me know because it's something that always gets brought up after a couple drinks. Hey, we should go to a Braves game. The battery's fun. Oh, we could go down there for a weekend, catch a couple games. There's a hotel down there. But we've never done it. Kind of like a Memphis Grizzlies game. Yeah. It gets brought up, and then we just never go. Yeah, well, Memphis, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I don't know if it's worth it. But to go to one game, we've lived here for 10 years, and we've never been to one Braves game or one Memphis Grizzlies game. They're both three hours away. I would rather go to Atlanta and go to a Hawks game than go to Memphis and go to a Grizzlies game. But I, you can see John Morant. We got a sales guy. Hook it up. Okay. He, dude, he told me he could do you and me go to a Hawks game. Jonte Murray, Trey Young. Uh, and they'll get the, they got the number one pick. Mm-hmm. Agree. Okay, got it. Wait, please scroll to review this. I'm trying to find out where my tickets are tonight. You the, think they hook it up? Oh, I'm. I'm they better. Let's see. You got to think. It's usually suites, though. I wouldn't be surprised Ooh. if they put you in a suite. Oh, view seats. Because you know here. Oh! I, oh! Ray. This is nice. Dude, iHeart in Nashville does the suites. How know, do I for, zoom in? Ray, I'm going to show. I'm going to go with one section. This is nice. Just tell I, me the number. If it starts with a one, I know it's, it's a good. one. There you go. That's definitely third base or first base line. It is third base. Now, my question is, do I let my boys bring their baseball glove? Yeah, that's something they can get signed. Uh, never know if there's a pop-up. Right. My kids aren't going to catch the damn ball. And you they don't, don't want know them how lugging to... it around? <laughs> this is my issue. Bro, you got to get like, some SIGs. Sign those. Let's sell them. Well, I don't think my kids understand autographs yet. Like, well, they, they high-five the players at the National Soccer game. They don't 
they don't understand getting someone to sign something. They don't think that's cool yet. Right, but a handshake isn't monetary. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, you want to see a picture from my seat? Oh my god. Behind the catcher. Yeah, that's pretty good. I've never been to that stadium, but Damn. that doesn't look like a bad seat there at all. No. Get a couple glizzies impregnated with cheese. No, nah, I, I don't. See, here's the problem. Dude, there is nothing like baseball. A bi- Dude, what about the 666 challenge? Six innings, six beers, and six glizzies. I don't think I can eat six glizzies. Cause Ray, I'm, I'm not going to suck them off that fast. I, I Glizzies, to me, are not very good. That's the best pork missile. I, I mean, I can have a couple pork missiles, but that's about it. And I, and here's the problem with pork missiles. I don't put ketchup on them. I don't put mustard on them. I eat them just plain with onions because I don't like condiments. Dude, I'm telling you, you get the impregnated with cheese. Me, Justin, and Angelina can talk about pork missiles for 30 minutes at lunch. Angelina loves pork missiles? Dude, she went to Wallen and got a glizzy, got it impregnated with cheese. She was the whole Every picture she had, she was sucking off a pork missile. Huh. She loves missiles. Really? Yes. She downs them. Laura doesn't understand Who? our fat Baser doesn't understand our fascination with pork missiles and glizzies. Dude, I am like I am now hyped about this game. I almost want to go to Daddy Dogs right now after this and go get a pork missile. You know do- Daddy Dogs? Yeah, it's where Kitty always goes on Demumbrian. Is that the one with the really huge missiles? Yeah. But long. Okay. God, what is the other one that is like the when you walk up to the restaurant and the dog barks? Daddy dogs. <sighs> there are two different. There's two different ones. There's ones that are sold at the stadium at uh, Nissan. You know what I'm talking about? There's a sports bar that's like oh Rippies. My. No, a Rippies Glizzy. Daddy dogs. Let me look it up. Yeah, Daddy's dogs. That's the one I know too. But there's another one. I met. The guy that started Daddy's Dogs. In Nashville or is it in Nashville? Chain. So his buddy was moving here. He said, hey, Daddy. And he was like, hey, Get dude, me. I think we should set up a little thing on Broadway and sell hot dogs, sell pork missiles. He's like, this is a terrible idea, but we can try it. And that's how they got their start. I mean, 200 drunk people every Friday and Saturday night, each night trying to get a missile, times that by $1 to make. You sell it for five. I mean, they're making ten grand a night. And they started raking it in. Then they started opening restaurants, and boom, there they are. You know what's going to put them out of business? I just saw it the other night. Tell me. Grilled cheese. There's a grilled cheese food truck. Yeah, the grilled cheesery. Yeah. It's been around for about ten years, right? But has it been on Broadway? I don't know. Because they just opened a food truck, and sometimes they park it on Demumbrian, and every time I drive by, I just miss it being open. They had- um, Ray, I've thought about tomato soup. Oh, tomato soup and grilled cheese ah, is so good. We're going to business. Let, let me tell you. The girl next to us is sucking off a glizzy, and we have some guy drunk or shit eating our tomato soup. They're hey, man, spe- we're going to try and stay in business, partner. <laughs> hey, the good times are coming. These are the bad times. Hey, that's like. <laughs> Gosh, can you see it? All the kid, college kids are partying. They're all drunk. They're eating glizzy. Hey, what do you guys got to eat here? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> tomato soup. I think I'm gonna go next door and get a, do- a glizzy, dude. There ain't no dude getting a tomato soup that's gonna be hooking up. <laughs> hey, he's got this chick from the bar, and he's like, "Hey, honey, let's get some tomato soup. You want tomato soup? I'm going with this dude." Right. Every chick's going with the pork missile. Ah, uh, you're probably right. You're probably right. But there was hey, there used to be a restaurant that was on Shark Tank called Tom and Chi. I we used to go there in West, but it went out of business. Dude, they started as like a little food tent on the side of the road, and they blew up. Then they went on Shark Tank, and then they overexpanded way too fast. <laughs> lost everything. Right by oh, it's done. I think so, dude. Right by my house, I could go in there, and maybe there'd be one person in front of me. Any kind of grilled cheese, right? Any kind of grilled cheese. And Tom and Chi. When you felt like being real fat, they'd have two donuts and like a s'more in the middle of two donuts. Dude, their food was bomb, but it only lasted a year and it was out I of I never went. I watched it on Shark Tank and I was like, I'm gonna go to that. It was I'm one gonna of those, go to that dude, and it, I never went. It was one of those places you go in and you're and you it's your secret because there should have been a line there and there was never anybody there. And I was just sitting there enjoying my grilled cheese. You could get if it was hot, I don't, I'm trying to remember all the different toppings. Oh, you could get, was it a, what the hell was it? Grilled cheese, 
Sometimes you could get jalapenos in it, tomatoes. I believe that was it, right? Or was it I, mac I and cheese? That you can do. There was all different ones, right? I don't know. I never went. Okay. I saw them on Shark Tank, and I said I'm going to go there. But that's what it was: two donuts, s'more in the middle. Oh, hungover Monday, dude. It was awesome. Don't Mondays, huh? Yeah, sometimes it was a two-day hangover. Got it. Got it. All right. Well, hey, uh, yeah, Atlanta, look for me. Hey, look for me on TV. I'm going to wear a sore loser shirt. I'm going to need inside info because last weekend my one bet in the parlay that lost was baseball. Never bet baseball. I, I mean. <laughs> it's a nightmare. I mean, it can be a nightmare. Up, uh, over, under, first inning run. Who knows? This guy, Skeens, is going to be good. No, he's going to give up 10 runs. He's going to win. Cubs are going to put their ace out. He's going to suck ass. Dude, you can't figure out baseball. Rockies are going to win three in a row. Rangers lose three in a row. Good luck. I'd rather bet horse racing. No. Here's what you do. Every game, you're going to lose some of them, but you just got to be consistent. You Listen, got- baseball. I would rather bet. Here's my list. Golf, horse racing. Golf. Golf one, football, college football, horse racing, hockey, NBA, baseball. Hell, M- w- M- MMA and boxing, baseball goes ninth. Baseball is the worst sport to bet out of all of them. So good luck. Have fun at the game. I'm not betting it. Unless you have inside info on a pitcher. Here's what you do. Ray, he's missing the zone. Put some money on it. Hey, live (laughs) bet it. Live bet it. (laughs) I'm telling you. (laughs) (laughs) I thought Lunch said this guy was wild. He has eight Ks through one inning. The White Sox have only won uh, like 13 games or something like that this year. Bet against them every game. That was a bet. The The team to finish the Colorado Rockies are terrible. Bet against them every game and the Miami Marlins. Those three, bet against them every game. You're going to win more times than you're not. No. I'm telling you, the home run guy is going to be Otani because he's going to play more games at Coors Field. I feel like they have a shorter porch there in Chavez Ravine with the Dodgers. I just feel like Otani's going to be your winner. Judge is in uh, 10. He's in third place. Otani's in, let's say, second place. And then you got Ozuna right there. And then the leader right now is Kyle Tucker, but he's going to fall off. You pick the home run leader, you're going to be a millionaire. And I think we've done that. <laughs> All right. Have a good weekend, guys. I'm headed to Atlanta. I'm I'm staying at the Battery. I'm staying right there in the party zone. I don't know. They said it's walking distance to the stadium. I always love talking about it, but never been there. Well, I'm going to have a detailed report of everything that happens there. Every every time. Friends. Oh, we went to Atlanta. Had a great time at the Braves game. Oh, we should go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've had that conversation a hundred times and never can <laughs> gone to a Braves game. Hey. The Battery, is it fun? Oh, you guys would love it. Oh, we should go. Never go. We've never gone in 10 years. But every time we talk to the Dodds, our friends from Georgia, the, the Gatlinburg, we talked a whole day about Braves games, the battery. Never been. The guy that lives down the street, he's like, man, we, 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 sh- we really wanted to sneak away last summer and take the boys down to a Braves game. He goes, this summer, we got to do that. <laughs> like, he goes, yo. we have got, he goes, we just need to pick a day <laughs> and we'll just drive down to Atlanta. It's yeah. only a few hours. Catch a Braves game, spend the night, come back. He goes, the boys will love it. Yeah, 10 years later, I haven't picked a day. <laughs> that was uh, that was in February. He hadn't brought it back Yeah, up. he hasn't picked a day. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, man, we're running out of time. We're running out of time. So I said, screw it, I'm going without you, man. Yeah, the battery. Heard it's fun. But Drinks? I, but I am disappointed because the Cubs were there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, who do you got? Padres. See, Tatis. Steroids! I already got Steroids. the autograph. Oh, you're going to get to see Luis Castillo, new to his team. Uh, Luis Arez, Arise. Yes. What about... Uh, Xander uh, Bogarts? Blake Snell. Is he with them? Nah, he's with the Giants, man. Oh. He sucks. He got the Cy Young last yeah, year. Yeah, he though. sucks. I got him on the fantasy. He sucks. <laughs> Me and Cousin Andrew, he came up, he pitched two games, got rocked, and went on the IL. But my cousin did text me the other day, and he goes, he said, what he, his exact quote, Snell threw an immaculate inning during his rehab. Let's get that man back to the big leagues. He's not even in the majors. You no, got he's on fan. a rehab assignment. You know what an immaculate inning is? Yeah. Nine pitches, three strikeouts, boom, get out of the inning. Let's go. Saw Reed Detmers do it one time when I went to see him play for the tra- uh, Rocket City Pandas, Trash City Pandas, whatever they're called right down here. He played for them in Huntsville, Alabama. Immaculate inning. That's how I knew he was going to be good. Yeah. Oh, that's that's incredible. A lot of luck with that. You're right. All right, we out. Uh.